and welcome to my channel. My name's Angela and this is Devon Thread Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's going to be a bit of a chatty video, so it's kind of like a Friday sews, but I'm going to talk about uh, what sewing I have or haven't been doing, <laughs> my lack of sojo, what I'm doing to try and rejuvenate that, the Stitch Festival, and also um, where I am in my life right now. <laughs> so I've made myself a cup of tea. Why don't you make yourself a cup of tea and join me for the chin wag. So first up, I just wanted to let everybody know, but I think probably most people that watch me on here follow me on Instagram, so you've probably seen that I no longer work at the school. It was my choice. A lot of people have said to me, oh, you know, were, were you made redundant or, you know, you were asked to leave or something. It, that wasn't the case at all. I, I decided off of my own back that it just wasn't for me anymore. I wanted to do the school job because I just wanted something a bit different and I wanted something I thought where I didn't have to think very much. It was an admin job, um, but I wasn't one of the main admin people. I wasn't sort of senior in the admin department. So my job was very mundane and I didn't need to think, which is what I thought I wanted. And it just really wasn't. <laughs> and I just got very very bored um, it's a shame because I loved the children and I really liked the school and I liked the staff and it was really good fun to work there in that respect but I just knew that I needed to do something and find something that was going to challenge me now I haven't actually got another job and I'm not doing anything particularly at the moment so I can probably hear a lot of you saying well, isn't better that you're doing something than doing nothing? Well, I just wanted to take some time out and find what it was that I actually wanted to do. So I'm exploring lots of different options at the moment and thinking about different things. And I promise I will update you as I go and let you know what I come up with. <laughs> but I am, I am searching. So that kind of leads me on to my sojo and my sojo just totally disappearing and if you haven't heard of that expression before which I'm sure you have it just means that your sewing inspiration your sewing want and need and kind of passion just kind of does a bit of a uh, and floats away for a little while and I don't really know why that's happened to me I've kind of put it down to potentially three things I think the first thing is that I don't have a job anymore so my direction and my um, actual dress and attire has definitely changed I don't need work dresses and that kind of thing so when I'm going to my cupboard and I'm trying to look at what I want to wear I've got lots of very worky things that I wouldn't wear just in and around the home but I also feel like the things that I've got that I'd wear in and around the home just they're not floating my boat anymore and I don't really know why just they just not really what I want to wear which then makes me think well I don't I don't know what I want to wear <laughs> so I'm kind of exploring that at the moment and trying to find where I am with that and what I want to do and I guess in some respects find my new uniform but when I say uniform I don't mean you know a tabard or a suit or something like that but just something that suits my lifestyle right now and I'm just trying to explore what that is and find it and I don't want to make things that aren't going to suit that and then not wear them so that's definitely one reason my sojo has gone I think the other and I don't want to um, spend too much time talking about this because I know it can be triggering for some people but I'm not particularly happy with my weight right now I am a different size and a different shape than I was 12 months, 18 months ago. And whilst I want to lose a little bit of weight and it's not a huge amount, my clothes and a lot of my clothes just don't fit me at the moment. So I don't feel happy about that. And so it's again about adjusting to that. And do I just make clothes that are for my size right now, which I think I'm coming around to the idea of that's what I have to do. Because in my head, I think for some time I've been thinking I'm going to wait until I've trimmed back down to where I was or I've toned up or I've lost weight or whatever it is. And actually, that time just doesn't ever seem to be coming. So I just need to accept who I am right now, make the clothes. I might put on more weight and those clothes might not fit me. I might lose the weight and those clothes won't fit me. But at least right here and right now in my life those clothes will fit me and it might make me feel happier so that's 
that's one thing. And then the other thing, which I think everybody can agree on, the weather has been ridiculous. Now, I was away at the Stitch Festival this weekend, just gone, and Rachel from the French Seams said something which I just thought was genius. She said, January has been the longest year. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Yes, it does feel like we have been in this endless year long cycle of rain and wind and grey skies and oh, it just makes you feel really rawr, like that. And just we are just getting glimpses of some nicer weather. And oh, my goodness, it does feel so good. However, I am going to put in a little video here of my husband and my daughter, because whilst I'm glad the weather is turning, we had a freak snow flurry the other day. I mean, it didn't last. Within 24 hours, it was gone. But oh my gosh, they had the best time messing around, throwing snowballs at each other, building a snowman. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it was quite funny. But Ellen's idea was, do you know what? We don't get snow very often and by the morning it's going to be gone. So I'm going to get out and play with it. So at 10 o'clock at night, that's what they were doing, which was hilarious. And she was right because it had gone by the next day. <laughs> anyway, I've diverted off from my sojo, but I think that's why I've lost my sojo. So what am I going to do to try and rejuvenate my creative juices and my want to sew and all that kind of thing. So I have a few things and a few ideas of what I'd like to do. Now, you can see this little area of my sewing room, everything else out of vision and out of the view of the camera is an absolute mess. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is tidy my sewing room and just really make sure that everything has a place there's a place for everything that um, I don't have any bits of rubbish or duplicates of anything and, and um, things that I think I'm going to want to use, but I don't. And so I'm just storing them and taking up space. I'm going to try and really sort of declutter, tidy, clean and just make everything feel really, really nice. So it's a space that I want to come into. What I have done, although I haven't wanted to sew particularly, there have been a few projects that I have been doing. And the mess that I've created, I haven't tidied up as I've been going because I've been racing from one project to another. And I say racing, they've still been very slow projects because my head's not been in it. But I just haven't then wanted to tidy up. So that's a project for me to do. On top of that, I think I'm going to try and de-stash a little bit of fabric. I have got a de-stash account. The link is in the description of this video below. But I think I'm going to add a few more bits to it. And I think I'm going to add a few patterns as well. When I was away on the weekend, I spent quite a bit of time with Katie, who is whatever Katie makes on Instagram. I'm pretty sure that's her Instagram handle. If I've got that wrong, I'll put her name across there um, and I'll put a link into her Instagram below as well. Katie is just lovely and I spent the whole weekend with her. Um, I found her quite inspirational and I love her dress and her style and, and everything. Um, so it's, it was great to spend some time with her. But she was talking to me about... Um, decluttering your mind, decluttering sort of your space, etc. because she's been following, and I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, sorry Katie if you do, <laughs> but she's been following and put me in the direction of a YouTube channel called The Minimal Mum. And I'm gonna put a link into that channel below as well because oh my gosh, I've watched a few videos and it has absolutely made me kind of stand up to attention and kind of go, oh, actually I think this is gonna make a huge difference to um, my life, <laughs> not just my sewing, but my actual life. <laughs> and there's all sorts of things about organising things and just decluttering stuff so that it declutters your mind. And I think that's something that I need to do because I do have a lot of fabric, a lot of stash. I have a lot of patterns. I think I probably have more patterns than I have fabric. And I think part of my problem is that I have so many and there's so many that I want to make, which have probably now gone out of style as well, or gone out of my want to make, because your tastes change and seasons change and styles change. And I now feel like I don't know what I want to sew because there's so much, it's just this mess and merge. I can't see the wood for the trees as it were. 
So I really want to kind of narrow that down. Now, obviously I have lots of PDF patterns. I can't get rid of those. I'm not getting rid of those. They'll just stay on a hard drive somewhere. That's fine. I have lots of paper patterns and the ones that I feel like I don't want or I don't think I'm going to make anymore, then I will de-stash. Um, and I think that would be good for me to do. And the, the, the worst comes to the worst. If I really feel like in six months time or a year's time, oh gosh, I really want to make that, but I don't have it anymore. I can buy it again. It's not going to be a problem. So hopefully that's going to be a good thing. But once it's out of your head, it's out of out of out of mind, isn't it? <laughs> so that's that's a couple of things that I think I'd like to do. Another thing that I think has been stopping me from wanting to sew is I have a fair amount of whips. So projects that I've been working on which are incomplete. So I have some which are several years old. And I have some which are within the last 12 months or so. Now, the ones that are several years old, I have to say, they're in a cupboard underneath where I'm filming right now. <laughs> and I probably haven't pulled those out once even to look at them. I was going to, I was going to do a bit of a session of going through, checking, seeing what I wanted to sew, seeing what I was going to make up. And I just never have. Now, I've got those and then I've got whips that I have... I think I've only got three whips that I have not completed in the last 12 months. One of them is a dress for Amy and that's purely putting some buttons on and I've now got the buttons so I am going to get that done. The other one is a dress, a summer dress, which I haven't put buttons on. I know I've talked about this, this dress before and I need to get the buttons on that. I haven't put them on basically because it's such a summery dress and the season just hasn't been right. So that hasn't given me the drive to want to finish it. But I think now that the seasons are starting to change, I will get that done. So those are two whips that I think I will get done and I will get finished and that's fine. And they're simple. In fact, they're both the same thing, both buttons that need to be completed and finished. So that's an easy fix. The third whip that I've got from this last 12 months or less than 12 months is a sew over it uh, Jessie Cotagan. Now I was really excited about making this Jessie Cotagan and I still really want to make that garment and that coat but I picked up some fabric um, I was at a it wasn't the stitch festival but I was at something like that I think it was at one at Alexandra Palace the knitting and stitching show and we were sat around in a group um, having a bit of a chat and sharing with each other what we bought and Sarah who is so Sarah Star, which you'll know from Instagram and YouTube um, she and again another very inspirational lady I just love her style and my goodness she's a lovely lady as well <laughs> so she had bought this like it is slightly stretchy but like almost like a boucle kind of fabric in and I'm going to use Sarah's words here in a dirty colour and I saw it and I was like oh my gosh I really love that that's so nice it was like a, a, a mucky mossy green that's kind of how I would describe it and she had bought this and said she was going to make a coat with it I was like oh would you be offended if I copied you and I and I bought the same fabric she's like no that's absolutely fine and I knew I wanted to make the Jessie Cotagon. I've got it, I've started it, I'm halfway through sewing it. I've put the lining in, or I'm putting the lining in just to make it different from the last coat that I was making. And I've just suddenly gone, do you know what? This isn't my colour, this isn't my thing, and I just don't think I want to do it anymore. And so every time I go to sew, I think, well, I should finish that, but I just don't want to. <laughs> and if you've got projects like that in your in your armour or in your in your area that you're sewing, it does put you off. It just makes you think, I don't want to do that anymore. I just, just don't have the headspace for it. And then I, if I feel guilty about then going on and do, starting a new project. So I don't know what to do with that. I don't know whether to finish it and maybe try and sell it or gift it to somebody, finish it and try and wear it and see if I do want it or just be realistic and pack it away for another time that I might come back to it and if after 12 months I haven't gone back to it and at 12 months time I think I really don't want to do this just to be really honest with myself and get rid of it I think that's going to be a sensible thing to do so some other things that I'm going to try and do to rejuvenate my sewing enthusiasm is to watch lots of YouTube videos I kind of got out of the habit of it and I've lost track of 
um, sewing YouTubers and, and all sorts of things. So I really want to get back into making sure I watch that because it is great to watch other sewing YouTubers and their inspiration, their ideas, their hints and tips, etc. And yeah, it's just really great. So I am going to start making sure I watch lots more YouTube videos, looking at Instagram. I also want to jot down styles and things that I particularly like. Um, not necessarily from the sewing community, but just sewing, uh, just styles in general that I've seen that I like. So, for example, my husband and I have just finished watching a series on Netflix called Fool Me Once. I think that's what it's called. And oh, I'm really bad with names of actors and uh, actors and actresses. But the main character in it, who's oh Michelle Keegan, <laughs> she had on like a really nice white top with these. Um, slightly fitted but uh, wide leg trousers and like a really long coat and I was like oh my gosh I absolutely love that style so it's just things like that kind of capturing styles that you see and jotting them down and then being able to relate them to patterns that you've got um, and making sure that it's something that you think would suit you and would fit in your life right now so I'm, I'm going to try and be more mindful of making sure I take either mental notes no, I think I am actually going to take physical notes because <laughs> I won't remember if I just take mental notes. Me um, notes of styles that I like and try to, like I say, incorporate that into finding a pattern that I think would replicate that style. So I'm also going to join in with some sewing challenges. So I have just taken part in Sew Frugal. Um, that's a challenge organised by Sam and Ruan. Um, Sam is Ruglisma and Ruan is the Yorkshire Sew Girl and they do a challenge every March and it's um, basically to sew something which has not cost you anything and it's free pattern and I did a little video on this and what I was potentially going to do. One of them was a checkered skirt, haven't unfortunately done that and the other one was a self-drafted pattern in this fabric which as you can see from this bundle of scraps I have actually managed to do that and I'll be bringing out a video on Sunday with my reveal and a little sew along just as a little treat for you all <laughs> so that's going to be good and there are lots of challenges coming up as well that I would really like to take part in so I'm going to try and take part in those challenges because I think it would be really good for me to have like a focus even if I only sew one thing in a month that actually that's my focus and that's what I decide I'm going to make and that's absolutely fine so that's one thing but also I am I have reached out to quite a few people and asked about potentially doing some collaborations with them with various garments or various styles of things and thankfully lots of people have said yes so that's really great and I think that's going to be something that's going to help drive me through the year as well so that's really lovely so that's kind of all of the things that I want to do to try and rejuvenate my sewing I don't want to say sewing juices, it sounds really weird, but my sewing enthusiasm. But if you have any more ideas, please do let me know. It'd be really great to hear um, if you've ever been in a bit of a sewing slump and what you did to try and re reignite that passion for it. And the thing is, it's not, I know that I want to sew. It's not that I don't want to sew. It's just that I don't know what I want to sew. That's the thing. <laughs> So on to the Stitch Festival. Now I'm not going to talk about this a huge amount because I I didn't do very much videoing while I was there. I took a few little bits and I'll, I'll show you a bit of a pan around of the area because I think I did take a video of that. But I know that lots of sewing YouTubers have done a come with me to the Stitch Festival or um, see what I did at the Stitch Festival and they are so fab and they're so fun and I know there's probably going to be a lot of duplication in that so I don't want to do that and I don't want to duplicate that for you so please do go and check out lots and lots of other sewing youtubers videos I'm going to list a few below and I am just going to say I'm not going to talk about names here on this and the list that I put in below is not exhaustive. Obviously, I know there will be other people, but these are the people that I spent time with. So please don't feel that I'm excluding you. It's not purposeful. It's just that 
I, I can't include everybody, so I hope that's okay. But I'm gonna put some pictures up of various people that I saw and spent time with, and it was just such an amazing time. And I did think it would be something that would make me go, oh, all right, I'm gonna start sewing again. It kind of didn't, if I'm absolutely honest with you. It was great to sit around and chat sewing with people. I absolutely love that. But shock horror, I literally bought this three, these three packs of labels from Little Rosy Cheeks. One that says, handmade, imagine what else I can do. Or oh, should I take them out so you can see them? Imagine what else I can do. Um, one of them <laughs> that says, swing it, shake it, move it, made it. I mean, I just love that. I had to have that label. So that's that one. I really like that and I like the colour of it too. That's the other one, handmade, imagine what else I can do. And then the last one says, creativity never goes out of style. So, oh my gosh, I'm gonna rip this. I should have opened these before I started talking to you, shouldn't I? And this has got a little bit of gold in, so I quite like that as well. So really, really sweet. And I do quite like a label. I have had an idea of a label that I wanna get in contact with Victoria about and see whether or not she thinks it's a good idea. I don't know, she might get people contacting her all the time. Um, but I bought those labels. I saw some fabric that I liked. I touched fabric, I stroked fabric. I touched and stroked a lot of people, which sounds like a really weird thing. But when you go to these things, that seems to be what you do. It's very strange. You wouldn't ordinarily just go up to somebody that you didn't know in the street and go, I really like your dress. Do you mind if I just feel that material? And what's that like at all? <laughs> but that's what you do when you're going to a sewing festival. It's quite funny. Um, so I didn't buy any fabric. I didn't buy any patterns. I just think I am in a little bit of a state of overwhelm with what I have. And so adding to that, it's just not going to help, is it? And when I really desperately want something and I know I'm going to sew it right there and right then, then I will order that fabric or pattern or what have you. But there's no point in adding to the calamity that's going on really, is there? So that's potentially why I didn't buy anything. I just didn't, I just didn't feel it. However, I had the most amazing time. I had the most amazing weekend. I spent time with people that, um, Michelle, um, who is Sewing Bunny, and Katie from whatever Katie Sews and I were chatting. And we said, you know, it's a great environment because you can just totally geek out. I mean, you think of conventions for, you know, um, I don't know, like a Star Wars convention or something like that. And you think, oh, you know, those people, they're all like geeks and they're all doing this, that and the other. But do you know what we are? We are sewing geeks. And when you're amongst all of your fellow sewing geeks, you can just geek right out. And I love that. <laughs> so it was absolutely wonderful. So please don't think that I didn't have a nice, enough, a nice time. I had an amazing time. We watched the catwalk. We saw lots of the sewing bee contestants. We bumped into people people who you know we watch on YouTube or see on Instagram lots and lots of people came up and said hello to me and said thank you for doing the videos and things and oh my gosh that made me feel so amazing and I'm really really grateful to anybody that did do that because it does make doing these videos worthwhile so thank you so so much but yeah I and I won't I won't stop myself from going to another stitch festival or anything like that even if I'm feeling like this because I had a great time, just didn't do it for me to want to buy fabric, etc. However, lots of people bought lots of lovely fabric. So do go out, do go and check out other people's YouTube um, videos because oh, yeah, some of the fabrics were delicious. <laughs> so that in mind, I also am going to go to a sort of a stitch thing. It's the Craft for Crafters, I think it's called, in Exeter. So Helen, who is Stitch Rip Repeat, and I, we are going to try and go to that next weekend. And I can't wait. Let me know in the comments below if you're going, if you are, what day. You never know, I might be able to bump into each other and say hi, which would be great. So, like I said earlier, this week, really the only thing I've done is my skirt in this fabric, which the video will be coming out. So I don't want to share that with you now because the reveal day is the 31st. Just wait. <laughs> so that was what I've done this week, but plans for next week. So I plan to make a plan, <laughs> which I know sounds really crazy, but I'm going to plan and not over plan. I'm just going to sort of decide on a few bits and pieces that I want to do, collaborations that I want to do, 
um, sewing challenges that I might want to do and garments that I might want to do and I'm just going to be very easy on myself and not go too mad. So hopefully next week I will maybe on Friday do another Friday sews but with a bit of a plan of what I'm possibly intending on doing so that'll be one thing and then the other thing I thought I would try to do next week is just to sew something easy. Easy to sew, easy to fit and easy to wear and something that I'm going to feel nice in. So I did a fabric haul, was it a fabric haul last week and I had a few bits and pieces in there and oh by the way lots of you have said about me doing an ironing board uh, cover tutorial absolutely 100% I will be doing that just bear with it might not be next week but it will definitely be the next uh, the week after that so I will do that um, but I thought next week would be really nice to make myself something really nice and simple and I know I talked about this on my last video but I am going to make the uh, chalk and notch page hoodie and I'm going to make it out of this fabric, which I showed you again last week, which was from so much more. So that's what I plan to do next week. So if you fancy having a little look at that with me next week and seeing if I actually did do it, then come back and visit me next Friday. But in the meantime, So Frugal Reveal will be on Sunday. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's just a chatty one. Doesn't seem like there's much sewing, but the whole content has been really about sewing, except for the snow bit. That wasn't really sewing, was it? <laughs> I just thought it was funny. <laughs> um, so yes, do um, do let me know in the comments below if you're going to the Craft for Crafters or in Exeter next week. Let me know if you have lost your sew, Joe, at any point and what you did or what you found was the most helpful thing to rejuvenate your inspiration and your um, enthusiasm for it because it'd be really great to know. But otherwise, just say hi because I like to say hi too. <laughs> So that's it from me. I'm going to go off and do a bit of housework because my daughter's coming home in a minute. So I hope the rest of you all have a really great Easter weekend. Whatever you're up to, I hope that you're getting the chance to see friends or family or spending some nice quality time on your own if that's what you're looking forward to as well. But I hope you're all well. Have a good week and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.